Hey everybody, in this video we are going to talk about the optimizations you can do to decrease CPU usage in your Blue Iris setup. So let's jump right in. So let's go up to the top to the gear icon for global settings. And then let's go over to cameras. You're going to see something called hardware accelerated decode. And if you have an Intel CPU, you can actually change this to Intel. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can change this to NVIDIA. This will be the global setting. So when you put your cameras on default, you can granularly change each camera. It'll use whatever setting you put here. But if you want to split it up and have some cameras use your Intel chip and some cameras use your GPU, you can do that as well. So I'm going to click NVIDIA and click OK. So let's go into the camera settings. So we'll right click on the camera, go to camera settings, and then we're gonna go over to video. And down here, you'll see hardware decode set to default. You have to make sure it's on default to use the global settings, or if you wanna use a, an individual setting, you can or not at all. Now I should mention that you see there's CPU and GPU usage already. Blue Iris will use your CPU and GPU. What you're telling Blue Iris to do when you select hardware decode is use essentially the chip within the chip. So it's an actual decoder that's built into either an NVIDIA graphics card or an Intel CPU. So it can be more efficient to force the hardware decode versus just letting Blue Iris use the CPU or GPU as it pleases. So we'll leave this on default. Now how you can see if the GPU or CPU is being used is if you go up here to the status window and you click over to cameras in this HA, it stands for Hardware Acceleration. And you can see I changed this camera, Amcrest 2, to use NVIDIA. There's an N there. If I had changed it to Intel, there would be an I there. And the dash means that it's just the regular old, it's using CPU cycles just like it normally would. Another optimization you could do, right click on the camera, go to camera settings. We'll go back to video and check off limit decoding unless required. And click OK. This is especially helpful if you have a lot of cameras and you're on this screen. So if there's no movement on this camera, it's not going to just continuously decode that image. So if I move my hand in front of it, you can see it's kind of a delay. It's kind of blocky. It may take a while. This didn't even show up in the preview. There it is. Finally did. But if I double click into it, now it's in real time or near real time, like every other camera, because now it's decoding. But when I'm not in full screen or I'm not clicked onto it, it's saying I'm going to limit the decoding to decrease the, in this case, this one's set to NVIDIA GPU, um, to decrease the GPU percentage, which it has. I think it was in the 20s before I'm going to limit decoding. Another thing you can do is if we click on a camera, go to camera settings, go over to the video page, display overlays live. Now displaying overlays, it won't take a ton of CPU usage, but if you're using the Blue Iris overlays, it will take some. So I usually suggest to let the camera, for example, the overlays that are coming from all three of my cameras in this lab computer, the time and date is coming from the camera itself. So it's not coming from Blue Iris. If you do turn this on and you have overlays and you wanna add text or images or time date, that will add some CPU overhead. So if, you can, if you're trying to optimize how much CPU and GPU you're using, remove the overlays from Blue Iris and log into your camera and do it there. Something else you could do to optimize your CPU and GPU usage is to use substreams. I have a whole video on using substreams. I'll link above. When you go to the camera settings, we'll go to this one and go over to video, or when you add a brand new camera, you have this option and you go to configure you have this option for a substream. So this is your mainstream, this is your substream. If your camera supports substream, um, it's a good idea to turn it on. So what that does is you have your main stream, which is a high resolution, high bit rate, high megapixel resolution stream. And then your substream is lower resolution, lower bit rate. So your playback and continuous recording could be of the substream. And then when Blue Iris sees motion or is triggered, you could have it record the high quality, the, the high stream. Or when you click into a camera on the preview, like the, the window that you see all your cameras in, the, the little grid, 
you could have it be higher quality versus if they're just all postage stamps, they can be the substream. So it removes a lot of the load off of Blue Ira. So that's another way. So you go in, turn the substream on, click OK, click OK, the camera will restart here in Blue Iris. And then to confirm that the substream is working, you can actually right click back onto the camera once it's back up and running. You might be able to see that now in the preview window, it's a little bit soft, meaning like kind of out of focus. It doesn't look quite as sharp as say this camera because I'm seeing the substream. So let's click back into that camera. And now on the general page, you should see the mainstream and the substream. You can see this one's five megapixels, this one's 0.3 megapixels. But if I double click into this camera, took a second and then it switched over to the mainstream and now it is sharp as a tack. A great feature Blue Iris has is being able to run it as a Windows service, meaning you don't have to have the, the actual graphical user interface open for Blue Iris to run. And it also means that if the computer reboots for some reason, a Windows update, it will automatically restart the Blue Iris service. It's running in the background. I do have a video I'll link above on how to set this up. But I'll show you real quick. The reason why I'm talking about this in optimization is if you don't need to have that graphical user interface open, that will also save you some CPU cycles. Go over to the main global settings, go to startup. This is where you want to check run as a Windows service, no UI, run again for console. And you will need a local administrator account to log into when you turn this on. So this will work. When we started, the CPU was higher than this. The GPU is higher than this. I'm actually going to turn on substreams on this camera as well because I don't have it on, even though we did the limit decodes. Let's go over to video, configure. We'll turn on substreams. Let's see how low we can get the CPU and GPU usage. Click OK. We're going to do limit decode on this one. Click OK. So now we're down to 0% on the CPU and 4% on the GPU. And keep in mind, this GPU that's in this machine is a very low end GPU. And this camera does not have substreams. This is the Wise Cam. I do have another video on that, converting a Wise Camera V3 to be able to send RTSP. So these cameras I have here are Amcrest cameras, and they're five megapixel cameras. But the newer cameras go up even farther, eight megapixels, 16 megapixels. And sometimes the PC that we're trying to run them on just can't handle that. So what is default as a bit rate or resolution or frame rate is just too much for the Blue Iris PC. So one of the things you could do is log into the camera and lower some of those settings and that will help alleviate some of the stress on the CPU. So if we right click on this camera here, go to camera settings over to video, Here's the IP address of the camera. So if I click that, it should open up a web browser and here's the login page for the camera. We can log into the camera. In this particular camera, we'll go over to setup and video. Here's where the settings are for the mainstream and the substream. Our encoder, our encode mode is H.264, that's fine. H.265 is a more modern codec but it also takes a little bit more processing power. So we'll leave it on H.264. Our resolution is set all the way to the top. So that's one thing we could do is lower the resolution. Our frame rate is also our, all the way to the top. So that's another thing we could do. If we only need 15 frames a second to be sent to Blue Iris, that's something else we could do to lower the CPU usage. And then our bit rate is set to 6144. So let's say we went to 4096, that would also help and it's set to a constant bit rate. We could change that to a variable bit rate. If there's nothing going on, no motion on the camera, it's going to send less bit rate. You can get very granular with the settings inside your own camera, and each camera is a little bit different, but if you go to the IP address, log in, and go to the video settings, you can make some adjustments, and that will have probably the biggest impact on your CPU and GPU usage. I could have 20 cameras running at one megapixel at a low bit rate, but only two or three running at a very high megapixel resolution, frame rate, bit rate. It could take even more CPU and GPU than the 20 cameras. So it is a function of what you're sending to Blue Iris from the camera, as well as all the settings that we're talking about. Now you may be using some of Blue Iris's 
artificial intelligence capabilities that have come out in the last couple of years. And that can also affect the CPU usage. So let's just right click on one of the cameras, go to camera settings, and we'll go over to trigger. And then we'll click on artificial intelligence. If we were to turn on artificial intelligence, you have some options here. So you have a confidence level, number of real time images that get sent, and how quickly the AI is going to analyze those images. The number of images and how quickly are the main drivers of CPU utilization. So if you were to set this to 20 and set this to a lower number of 100, this would make your CPU usage go much higher when there's trigger events. Reason being is every time there's an event, it's going to fire off 20 frames to the artificial intelligence. And each frame is going to be analyzed for 100 milliseconds. That is going to return to Blue Iris with a confidence score. Blue Iris is going to say, okay, this is a person or whatever it is, truck, bus, boat, and either send you a notification or whatever you have set up for alerts. Granted, the more images and the faster it's happening, the better accuracy you'll get. So it's a balance. But if you're noticing that your CPU is, and GPU is pegged, you might come in here and lower it back to the default of 2 and 750. I'll do a dedicated video on Blue Iris's artificial intelligence capability. Just know for now that if you are having your CPU pegged and you need to try to decrease and you've done all the other steps that I've talked about, that you can play around a little bit with the amount of images that are sent and how quickly they're processed. If you found that helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want more content on Blue Iris and cameras and surveillance in general. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. And we do have an affiliate link to purchase Blue Iris if you haven't yet. If you want to purchase the license, it is in the description. With that, we'll see you in the next video. Take care.